Into the revenue service IRS tax news. Worker classification 101. Employee or independent contractor. Worker classification 101. Oh no. Is this where they're going to try to teach us about our pronouns? I had a horrible time understanding pronouns in grade school English. And now it's like they changed all the rules. Can't I just skip the training and like pay more taxes or something? What's that, Phil? No, because then I'll be causing physical harm to people around me by throwing he's and hers at people. But wait a second. He's and hers aren't physical things, Phil. They're not physical th and I don't I don't throw he's and hers. I say I say he's and hers at people or two people or whatever. First an attempt at a joke. President Biden is confused about how inflation happened. I'm confused. He's like, hey, there's something fishy going on around here. I'm telling you. There's fishy things afoot. Which is super strange. Because fish don't have feet. Patrick, you don't have feet. So how is it we got so much fishy stuff afoot? Like inflation, war, economic downturn. Uh, sir. One brave reporter responds, Your feet are in the tide pool. That's your foot. Stepping on the fish. Nothing gets by you, does it? In other words, there's fishy things afoot. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. Because the fish are just doing what fish do, and you're the foot. You are the problem. Stepping on them. And Biden's like, Wow, you totally blew my mind, dude. Wow, that blew my mind. Brilliant deduction, Watson. Reporter responding, you're welcome, sir. Now, would you please get your dang feet out of the tide pool of the economy? Get your butt out of there. It's clearly causing a lot of suffering. IRS tax tip 2022-117, August 2nd, 2022. A business might pay an independent contractor or an employee for the same or similar work, but there are key legal differences between the two. So when we're talking about an employer, for example, and then another person that's going to be doing work, the classification could be then an independent contractor or possibly an employee. Now you might think, hey, look, that's gonna be a decision that should be made between those two individuals, A and B, the two individuals involved. But then we have C over here, which is the IRS, which you might say, why don't you just go see your way out of here, IRS? But no, that's not gonna happen. So they have their interest as well. So we want to know what are the pros and cons of being an employee or independent contractor to both the employer, to the employee or independent contractor. And then what are the IRS's incentives involved in this? And then we want to know when someone should properly be classified as an employee or independent contractor because the IRS tries to make it something that should have like a hard line right so we should kind of know whether someone is an employee or a contractor because again c has their interests and they are imposing those interests on our definitions on our classifications here so keeping that in mind it is critical for business owners to correctly determine whether the people the people providing services are employees or independent contractors so it does make a big difference in terms of what your responsibilities will be uh, uh, as the employer or the person hiring an independent contractor. So here's some information to help business owners avoid problems that can result from misclassifying workers. An employee is generally considered anyone who performs services if the business can control what will be done and how it will be done. So let's give a quick recap on the incentives here. Note that on the employer side of things, the easy, if there was no taxes involved, paying an employee would be the same as basically any other kind of thing that we would have an expense for. We would just pay for it and we would record it as employee expense done. But as we know, of course, there's a lot of things other than that involved with an employee, a main factor being that the employer is required to withhold taxes. We got to get the W-4, we got to do the withholdings. So the IRS is basically requiring the employer to be their tax collector. So the employer is now mandated to actually do the withholdings, pay that money to the IRS, and then track the information so they can report what has been done 
to both the employee and the IRS in the form of a W-2 and W-3s and so on at the end of the year. That's a lot of work to do on the employer side of thing that's kind of added on to like a what would normally be just a simple expense type of transaction. On the other hand, if they were a contractor, that could be easier on the employer in some ways because then it is similar to a situation where you just have uh, another expense, although you might have to give them like a 1099, but that's gonna be a lot a, more of a simple process. So you can see on the employer side of things, they might have some incentives to, to uh, classify someone as an independent contractor, at least from the ease of, of uh, to do something, to how easy it would be to do something. Now, employers have other incentives to have employees because if you have someone as an employee, then you can kind of lock them in by giving them, you know, incentives and so on that they would lose if, the, if they were to leave the employee employer situation. So then that could be an incentive and so on. But that's that side. Now on the employee side of things or the independent contractor side of things, it could go either way. You might think, well, maybe, and the IRS will often argue that it's a benefit to the employee to be classified as an employee other than an independent contractor. But that's really kind of biased to the IRS because the IRS, that's what the IRS prefers because the IRS wants to be able to track everything more in more detail and get more information using the employer to do so. But the employee does have a benefit from being an employee because then, then sometimes they get benefits for, as an employee, for example. And uh, the, although they pay the taxes for federal income tax, social security and Medicare, they really only pay half the Social Security and Medicare on the payroll tax side of things. And then the employer has to pay Social Security and Medicare as well. So that because if they were an independent contractor, they would be paying self-employment tax, which includes the Social Security and Medicare basically for the employer and employee. So in essence, you pay more on the net income if your net income was equal to your wages in Social Security and Medicare through self-employment tax as an independent contractor than uh, if you got the same amount of money through W-2 wages. However, as a contractor, you can deduct a lot more stuff because if you're using your own tools and stuff, you got a lot more deductions and that could be a huge benefit lowering the amount of, of the taxable income and so on. So it could be a benefit either way to be a contractor or an employee. It just depends on what your desire is on the contractor or employee side of things. Keeping that said, the IRS clearly has an incentive to try to get people to be an employee because they want the leverage over the employer to force the employer to give them all your wage information so they can track your earnings and make sure they get paid from you for your earnings, which they can't do so much if you were a contractor. They can only get a 1099. They can't force them to give you the withholdings. Okay, keeping those incentives in mind, they're gonna try to force us to do the classification and act like it's like a, 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 a really solid line between what's a contractor and what's an employee. So how do you determine between the two so you don't get in trouble from the IRS? Well, uh, if you're controlling all the information that the employee does, meaning it's a nine to five job, for example, and they're at the desk answering, doing whatever you tell them to do at that point. Well, it's pretty clear at that point, since you have the control, not only how they're gonna do the job, uh, but what job but and how to do the job, then they're gonna be an employee. So what matters is that the business has the right to control the details of how the worker's services are performed. So you can contrast that to an independent contractor. So if you said, I would, even if they work for you like all the time, but you're saying you just point them to the job, you're like, I want you to go over there and paint the paint the place or whatever, paint the fence or you know put in the stucco into the house or you know do what do if you do online, put the website together or something like that. As long as you and they can do what however they do it, so they can bring in their team. I'm not telling you who to hire. I'm not telling you how to do it. I'm not giving you. I'm giving you a deadline. I'm not telling you when exactly you need to work on it and so on and that kind of stuff. You're using your own tools. That would be more of an independent contractor type of situation you would think. So if I, but if I'm looking over your shoulder and every detail that you're doing, you would think that'd be more of an employee situation. 
So it's not a it's not a hard line, it's a fuzzy line. So independent contractors are normally people in an independent trade, business, or profession in which they offer their services to the public. Independent contractors versus employees. Whether a worker is an independent contractor or an employee depends on a relationship between the worker and the business. Generally, there are three categories to consider. So they're going to look at these three categories and the IRS is going to try to determine where they lie. So if they, if they come after you on this, they could say, look, you hired someone and, and categorize them as a contractor. We think they should be an employee. These are the kind of things they're going to look at. So you want to make sure that you have them in your mind. You have the arguments in place and saying, this is why I classified however I classified. So you got the behavioral control. So does the company control or have the right to control what the worker does and how the worker does the job? So are they looking over your the worker's shoulder to see what they're doing and how they're doing it? Or is it just like, just do the end product and tell me when it's done? So financial, uh, financial control, does the business director control the financial and business aspects of the worker's job? Are the business aspects of the worker's job controlled by the payer? So, you know, the kind of financial aspects to keep them, you know, their business are you paying for the tools and that kind of stuff or are they you know paying for what they need to do to run you know a business in and of themselves things like how the worker is paid uh, are expenses reimbursed who provides tools etc etc relationship of the parties are there written contracts or employee type benefits such as pension plan insurance vacation pay now note this these are kind of things that are usually good for the employer because they kind of lock in uh, the employee. So if you have a good employee, you'd like to say, ah, you got your pension plan, you got your insurance and your vacation pay, because if they leave <laughs> before before those fulfillments, those contracts are fulfilled, then they lose those things, right? So that's a way that uh, it could be beneficial for an employer to kind of lock employees in to some degree. So while the relationships continue, uh, is the work performing a key aspect of the business? Notice if you don't have these things like pensions, insurance, and you just pay them a salary as an employer, then then the employee is, is good to go anywhere else anytime they want, which is fine. Uh, but obviously, you know, sometimes an employer is looking for stability and how they, how they can lock in stability is offer these types of things and so on. In any case, um, uh, misclassified, misclassified workers, misclassified workers. So what happens if I don't is it, is the common response here. What if I, what if I, what if I classify the way we determine between A and B and you could see your way out IRS. Well, here's what happened. Misclassifying workers as independent contractors adversely affects employees because the employer's share of taxes is not paid and the employee's share is not withheld. So note that the argument on the IRS will typically be, well, you're, if you classify someone as a contractor instead of an employee, you're doing them a disservice, which isn't always true. Maybe, I mean, maybe they would like to be an employee, but that's not always the case because they might be deducted, you know, they might have more deductions and so on on their side. So in other words, that's because the employer is not paying their share of the employer taxes. Instead, it's being calculated in the payroll taxes and self-employment tax on the employee side of things, which again, could go either way in terms of whether it be good or bad for the contractor or employee. If a business misclassified an employee, the business can be held liable for employment taxes for that worker. So the IRS, notice where the IRS sits, they want to classify as an employee. That's where they have the leverage. That's where they can tell the employer, you are now our tax collector and you better be collecting our taxes and paying them and giving us the W-2. And if we determine that someone is an employee, you categorize them as a contractor, you might have to then go back and pay the self-employment tax that you didn't pay, which is the Social Security and Medicare, and that could be painful. <laughs> so generally an employer must withhold and pay tax income taxes, social security, and Medicare taxes, as well as unemployment taxes. So that's the other one. It's not as big federal, that's the worker or employer tax, uh, that being the unemployment. So workers who believe they have been improperly classified as independent contractors generally must receive a determination of worker status from the IRS. There's a link to that here. So if you want to be a, an employee and you think you're being misclassified, then you know that then there's that situation so then they can use form 8919 uncollected social security and medicare tax on wages obviously if you were to take that route it might not <laughs> sit well with 
the employer or, or, or the person you're working with because, but in any case, you might want to find someone where you agree on what your status is. But in any case, to figure and report their share of uncollected Social Security and Medicare taxes due on their compensation. So Voluntary Classification Settlement Program. The Voluntary Classification Settlement Program, there's a link to that here, is an optional program that provides businesses with an opportunity to reclassify their workers as employees for future employment tax purposes. This program offers partial relief from federal employment taxes for eligible businesses who agree to process uh, prospectively treat their workers as employees. So in other words, you might be in a situation where you're saying, well, no status has changed for my employee or my contractor that I've had as a contractor, but I think maybe the IRS is gonna claim them as an employee. But if I start claiming them as an employee now, maybe the IRS will come back and say, I owe self-employment taxes for the whole time that they were employed. So in, in that case, obviously the IRS wants to incentivize you to make the change. And that's why they might give, you know, so that's the idea here. We're gonna say, well, okay, we're not, maybe we won't go back and try to completely, you know, cripple you <laughs> by, by trying to collect the, the self-employment tax for the last five years that they were a contractor if you, if you start pushing forward at this point in time. So if that's a concern, you can go into the, some more reading materials here. Businesses must meet certain eligibility requirements and apply for filing Form 8952 application for voluntary classification settlement program, VCSP, and enter into a closing agreement with the IRS. Who is self-employed? Generally, someone is self-employed if they if any of the following apply to them. They carry on a trade or business as a sole proprietor or independent contractor. So if you're just doing your own business, you're self-employed. They are a member of a partnership that carries on a trade or business. They are otherwise a business for themselves, including a part-time business. So you can be part-time and still be a business, even if it's like a part-time sole proprietor type business. Self-employed individuals, including those who earn money from gig economy work. Uh-oh, here they go. Iris is going after the gig economy. That's right, you gig people. You're self-employed. You owe taxes, say, say the IRS. Make sure to pay those even if you don't get a 1099. There's a link to the gig economy. Are generally required to file a uh, tax return and make estimated quarterly tax payments. So don't forget that, gig people, says the IRS. So they also generally must pay self-employment tax, which is Social Security and Medicare tax, as well as income tax. These taxpayers may qualify for the home office deduction. So you got that going for you, a little bit of, they're trying to throw you a little, a little something for your trouble if they use part of the home business. So you got a link to that here. There's links to all that stuff here. There'll be a link to this in the description.